Genesis chapter 6, we begin looking at Noah and the flood. Uh, today we're really going to set the scene, so uh, we're going to begin in verse 5 of chapter 6 this morning. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth, and his heart was deeply troubled. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jabeth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Jumping down to... uh, uh, verse 17, I'm going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens. Every creature that has the breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. Well, we, as we look at scripture, contrast is always one of the greatest places we can find lessons. Uh, you know, uh, we've talked about this before, but as we walk through another ch- book of the Bible of biblical narrative, Uh, We don't often or don't always get direct instruction. This is how you should live. This is how you shouldn't. Often it's through comparison, contrasting examples of people's lives. And as we look at the wickedness of the world, that everyone's heart is filled with sin and brokenness, there's one man who stands out. One man who God sees as righteous. Somebody who walks faithfully with God. Did you notice as we're reading this text uh, in verse 7, the Lord talks about how he's going to kill everybody and all the creation? Essentially, he's about to reverse everything he's done to this point. Now, it's quickly moving through uh, just in the sixth chapter of the book, but we've covered generations and generations of people. This is a long time, and God has had enough. He's ready to destroy everything. But there's one guy who walks faithfully with him. One guy whom God sees as as worthy of saving. And that's the guy, the man, Noah. We're going to talk about what's happening to Noah in the coming days. We're going to look at some of the details. But what I want us to see here is the, the, the power of one faithful man or woman, one faithful follower of Jesus. If not for Noah and his faithfulness, none of us would be here. If God hadn't found one man to be faithful, none of us would be sitting here. Our lives, faithfully living before God, can make a massive difference. Now, did Noah realize the impact? I don't know. Did Noah realize that he was the only one that was going to be saved, him and his family? I don't know exactly. But what we know is he walked faithfully with God. And as we're going to see, chapter 6 actually ends saying that Noah does everything that God told him to do. Can that be said of us? In comparison with the brokenness and the lostness of the world around us, do we stand out as faithful men and women? Do we stand out different from everybody around us? That's what God needs. That's the people we're called to be. And that's the people that make difference for God's kingdom. Father, help us to be as Noah, not as the mobs of people, not as the world and the standard of uh, of the world, but let us be a man who's willing to stand alone in faithfulness, a man or woman who's devoted to your way. Help us to see your kingdom grow and your kingdom come. Let us be a part of your work by faithfully serving you. May the righteousness of Christ that we claim be evident in our lives. 
In your son's holy name, amen. Have a blessed rest of the day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.